What's up, y'all? Thanks for coming and hanging out with us. If this is your first time, wave at me. If this is your very first time, come on, let's give them a hand. Everybody that's showing up today. Welcome to Hope City. If you're church shopping and church hopping, trying to figure out what works and what fits, you don't have to look any further. Welcome home. Come on, we believe that deep roots produce healthy fruit. Psalms 92, 13 says, blessed is the man or woman who's planted in the house of the Lord and it says that they will flourish in the courts of our God. If we haven't had the privilege of meeting just yet, my name is Daniel Groves and I serve as the teaching pastor here at Hope City. Y'all, I've, I've, got, my, I've got my whole like summer vibe going. I'm showing the ankle, I got ankles out. Got the ankles out, wingtips. What's going on? The real pastor will be back at some point. Uh, can we honor our pastors? Can we pass honor pastors Jeremy and Jennifer Foster? Now come on, honor them better than that, man. They said yes. So Pastor Jeremy is, and, and Miss Jen are getting a much needed uh, rest and, and rejuvenation. I love uh, the tenacity in the heart of a pastor that says, hey, I want longevity in this. And so last week we heard from our very own Brad Starup. How many of y'all enjoyed Brad, man? He was amazing. And, and this is the truth. He, he automatically is just so much cooler because he has such a great accent. I'm like, ah, God, why didn't you bless me with that? And the Lord said, no, I'm for even asking. I'm gonna remove your hair. Uh, <laughs> even asking me that, but he gave me a, a, like a Viking beard. So. <laughs> but I'm fired up because this is week one. We're kicking off summer at Hope City, and, and uh, I'm fired up because I'm excited about where God is going to navigate uh, this, this month. But here's the reality. We're at the six-month mark, six months into 2021. And, and I got like a, a smattering. <laughs> Some of y'all are like, I thought it was still 2020. <laughs> We're at the six month mark of maybe just surviving it for some. Maybe you've been thriving in the middle of it. But the reality is we're stepping into summer and during summer there's this natural transition of like letting your hair down, for those of you who have that, letting your hair down and kind of a little bit more relaxed. Maybe you're planning vacations. Maybe you're, this is a little slower pace for you. Kids are out of school. Like my wife has everything charted out like second by second. I'm like, it was supposed to be relaxing. She's like, you are relaxing, but you need to get in single file line. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> but, but the reality is I feel like sometimes kind of in our natural humanity side, we start taking a break, a timeout, Maybe even Paul's our relationship with the Lord during these times. But really, we should be doing the opposite. This should be the season at this six-month mark, going into summer, this should be the season that you're investing more into your relationship with Jesus, that you're investing more into the Word and your prayer life, that you're investing more into who God has called you to become because he ultimately wants to grow us, work through us, so that we can ultimately fulfill the assignment that's on our lives. So as we kick off Summer at Hope City. Uh, I'm fired up because we're also kicking off our summer connect groups. How many of y'all are a part of connect groups? Our connect group last semester was incredible. And, and here's our thing at Hope City, for those of you who are brand new, we truly do believe that life moves at the speed of relationships. Like we really do believe that we're better together. Like there's a quote, I say it all the time, that says if you wanna go somewhere fast, go alone. But if you wanna go somewhere far, go together. And we really do believe that we're better together. Proverbs 27, 17 says that iron sharpens iron as one man or woman sharpens another. If you are not a part of a connect group or have not been a part of a connect group, you have to jump in and be a part of a connect group. Our church is big enough to do some serious damage to the kingdom of darkness. Like we're big enough to make a massive impact, but our connect groups make us small enough so that we can know each other. So I wanna encourage you as we jump into the next six months, as we lean into his presence and we lean into his promises, I wanna encourage you, you can end this year strong. Somebody should shout. You, you, you can end this year better than when you started. And I woke up this whole week, I'm telling you, this week has been a wild week and I can't even get into all of it, but it's been, it's been a busy week, it's been a hectic week, there's been a lot of challenges, but it's funny because the very beginning of the week I told my wife, I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna believe for even more. I'm not talking about some of y'all like, oh, you want calf implants? I'm not talking about that. Like, I do wanna look like a runner, but I don't wanna run. Uh, no, I wanna start believing. I've decided to expect the unexpected because Hope City is marked by miracles. From the moment of inception of Hope City six years ago, over 40,000 people have committed their lives to Jesus in six years, come on. We've given away close to $8 million to local and global missions. We broke 
ground on our silos property, guys. We're gonna be a beacon of hope for a city. We're marked by miracles, and you may be watching online from another place in the world. Maybe you're a part of our online campus or at Katie or Woodlands, or maybe you're in this room, but I wanna challenge you at the six-month mark of 2021 to start expecting the unexpected. Let your faith grow outside of your comfort zone and begin to believe God that your family is marked by miracles. Let's pray and we're gonna jump in today because today we're gonna be talking about unshakable faith. Father, I thank you today that you give us ears to hear you, a heart ready to receive. God, in 1 Corinthians chapter two, Paul said it's not with my enticing words or even my perfect oratory delivery, but it's the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit that's active and alive in our lives. And God, today, I pray that you would work through me as I speak this word, but I, I, I'm believing that today, God, we would all leave marked. We would all walk out better, that we would all unanimously agree, Jesus, that you were in the room. I pray, God, today that marriages are restored, that families are healed, that lives are changed, that mental in, uh, unrest and mental instability, God, would begin to get made whole, God, that emotional struggles would begin to be whole, that physical issues and diagnoses would reverse today. God, it's only crazy until it happens, and we're gonna trust you and expect the unexpected in Jesus' name. Come on, if you believe it, say amen. amen. So earlier this week, I was talking to my friend Todd, and, and uh, I love to give honor where honor's due, and, and his pastor is a pastor named Darius Daniels, and and they were talking about a thread that they've been in in their church. And, you know, as pastors, we like to say, you know, Darius Daniel said. And then the next time I'll say, well, I heard somebody say it. And then on the third time, it's like, well, like I always said. Uh, <laughs> but I want to give honor where honor's due because in the middle of this conversation, something Pastor Darius has been going in the direction of is he's been talking about going back, kind of down memory lane a little bit. Going back and just remembering all that God has, has done. And, and here at Hope City, all the time, we teach that there's a reason why your windshield is bigger than your rearview mirror, because God is far more interested in our future than our past. But I believe that every day we have to have specific spiritual disciplines in place. Do y'all agree with that? That's why we have a challenge every single week that we typically give you, and one of them specifically is the first 15 challenge. So every single day, seven days a week, the first 15 you give to God. First five minutes in worship, five minutes in prayer, five minutes in the word, first 15 every day you give the Lord. And, and the thing is, you'll get hungrier and more passionate and you'll end up spending 15 and then 30 and then you'll wanna go to 45 and then an hour's not enough. So we give these challenges and one of the spiritual disciplines is just simply getting in the word of God. That it's a routine of relationship every day. This isn't a religious experience, but it's with a real God, a real heavenly father who loves you, who's not mad at you, but at, who's madly in love with you and actually likes to spend time with you. You, you know people that are like, hey, I love you, bro. I don't like that guy very much. <laughs> God not only loves you, but he actually likes you. So one discipline, spiritual discipline, is we gotta be in the word. Another spiritual discipline is we gotta pray. Amen. You've got to pray just to make it to death. That was terrible. That's MC Hammer for those of you. Okay. <laughs> These are kind of like MC Hammer pants a little bit. Okay, some of you guys are like, what does that mean? Just Google it. The MC. But pray. We got to have a spiritual discipline of a routine of prayer every day. Another one is a spiritual discipline routine of praise and, and worship, whether you can sing on key or not. Belt it out. Sing from the top of your lungs, even if it offends someone. Whether you have rhythm, you can't clap on beat, it doesn't matter, but we have to have this discipline. And here's another one. I believe another spiritual discipline that we need to begin to apply in our lives is the spiritual discipline of simply remembering. Because I think a lot of times we don't have a faith problem, we have a remembering problem. Just think about it, close your eyes for just a minute. I want you to remember the areas of your life where he pulled you up out of that low place. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of you are in the I never should have made it class. That's me. Like anytime I'm feeling pressed and I'm feeling like I can't get through it, I just stop. I just pause and I say, whoa, wait, 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 devil. You're telling me that I can't get through this. Do you realize that God showed up and rescued my drug dealing, drug addict, alcoholic dad? That I was almost aborted twice? If I was almost aborted twice, I can get through this. I feel like a lot of times we have a remembering 
problem of all that he's done. And the enemy loves this place because he will try to muddy the waters and cloud the judgment and try to tell you, listen, what you're in the middle of now, you'll never get through. But when you go back and you remember what God set you free from, it, in, it increases your faith in the now. It empowers your faith to get through the now. But then what it does is it builds your faith for what's next. So we have to go back and we have to just simply remember all that God has done. But here's the truth is a lot of times there's toxic thinking and there's distractions and maybe you've allowed, maybe you've allowed your mind to just get flooded and filled up with too much other distractions and maybe you've allowed occupancy to things and relationships and toxic issues that you don't even have the capacity to go back and remember because you're just so much into the situation and the current storm that you're in. I love this book by Joyce Meyer called Battlefield of the Mind. And I wanna encourage all of you to read it, download it. But she talks about the battlefield of the mind and I believe that God today is trying to get our attention to unlock unsh unshakable faith in our lives. And if he wants to unlock this unshakable faith in our lives, we have to make room. The Bible says this in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse five. It says that we are to take captive of every thought and make it obedient to Christ. I believe it's time to go in and search our minds and say, what are some areas in my life that I can evict and, and, and no longer allow occupancy? And my wife is gonna be so frustrated I'm telling this story, but I'm like, babe, when, when, when things happen to us, they will become, a, it will end up in a sermon. That is a guarantee. <laughs> Pastor Jeremy and I are both storytellers. I was like, if it happens, just make eye contact with me. I'm like, this is happening this Sunday. I'm gonna talk about it. So uh, two things that uh, you're guaranteed of if you are in Houston, one is tolls and other is roaches. <laughs> I didn't realize this before because I'm from the Midwest. Like you didn't see a roach. Now it's like we do life with roaches. I'm like, no, you don't. You don't do life with roaches. And so, you know, the whole rule of thumb is if you see one or two, there's about 7,000 others. <laughs> and so my wife's like, hey, I saw a roach today. I was like, what are you talking about? We need to burn the house down. Like it's time. <laughs> And move out of the house, like, and she's like, no, 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 it's just a couple. Well, then, like, I don't know, like, two weeks later, it was like 11.30 at night, she calls me, I'm in Atlanta preaching, and she said, babe, in the kitchen, I hear, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she said, like, I walked in the kitchen, flipped on the light, these roaches, they're just scattered, they're having a party, a full-on rave in our kitchen, and I was like, burn the house, it's time to move out of the house. Here's the thing, we had been given access to these, they, we've been literally roommates with these guys and didn't even realize it. So I called the big dogs in, I called the exterminators in, and this guy comes in and it's so funny, he, I think he could just see it on my wife's face. He said, let me clear up the elephant in the room. This has nothing to do with you being filthy. Bro, you're coming in hot. Like that just, I mean, it's just what she was thinking, but that's pretty fast. And he was like, no, these guys are great hitchhikers. He's like, do you do a lot of Amazon packages? He's like, sometimes. I'm like, twice a day? What are you talking about? <laughs> like, the Lord is speaking to you. He's saying, you don't need anything else. Like, and he's like, oh yeah, they ride in on boxes. We always recommend like you open boxes outside. He goes, the truth is, you could have put your purse down at church and one could have crawled in from someone else's bag into your bag. So we got roaches from y'all, somebody in the room. <laughs> blaming, we sit over here. Michelle is somebody. <laughs> and so we got aggressive to evict these guys and get them out of our house. And I can now stand here proudly to say that we are roach free. Amen. <laughs> and, but the truth is we have to position ourselves in a posture of surrender and say, God, I, I don't know why I've allowed all these other things to take occupancy in my mind that I've just stopped remembering all that you've done. Come on, if you need a breakthrough in your life, I just feel this spiritually right now. If you need a breakthrough in your life, I want you to lift your hands right where you're at, where you're watching at home, at Katie, at Woodlands. God, I pray right now, Lord, that the supernatural power of your spirit would meet them right here, right now, where they're at. God, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, I feel this strong on me today that there are people in this place watching online at a part of our other locations that they're gonna laugh again. God, there's people today that need a breakthrough and they're gonna love again. There are people watching and they're gonna watch the archive and they're gonna begin to live again because God, you specialize in the again. 
One of the definitions of the word testimony is do it again. God, I pray today that you would mark us today, that the power of your spirit would meet us where we're at and we can look back on this moment five years from now and say that was the day supernatural power began to touch my family and I begin to live again. Come on, somebody give God praise. Come on, look at the person next to you and say, God's already working. Come on, I just need faith to be activated. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 1, it says, now faith is the confidence in what we hope for in assurance about what we do not see. Second Corinthians says, and I love the amplified version, it says, for we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. We say this all the time at Hope City, that God's promises don't have expiration dates on them. So if he said it, his promises are yes and amen. 2020 and everything that happened does not erase the assignment in your life. Somebody should shout. That dream, that vision, that idea, that, that business startup, that thing that you shelved because you said, well, how am I supposed to pull it, pull it off now? It was never your idea to begin with. And if you will take it off the shelf and begin to put a little bit of unshakable faith on it, I'm telling you, God will breathe new life into it and you can finish 21 strong. The word unshakable literally means this. The definition of the word unshakable is a belief, feeling, an opinion strongly felt and unable to be changed. An unshakable faith in the righteousness of God, I'm telling you, will get you through every season. So our first step is we simply have to remember. And as we're looking through and navigating through unshakable faith, I want to look at a few seasons that we all face, that we all walk through. And the first season I want to look at is the season that feels like a waiting and silent season. How many of you guys have ever been there? Maybe you're just so holy, you're like, oh no, the Lord visits me every day in an audible voice with feathers. I'm like, you're amazing. I want to know you. But for all of us, the truth is we all go through these seasons where it almost seems like God is silent, and I believe that's part of a plan to unlock unshakable faith in our lives. In Genesis 12, God reveals to Abraham and Sarah, he says, hey, you're going to have a son. And Abraham, you're going to be the father of many nations. And they're like, really, God? We're super old. It said that Sarah literally, I love the Bible, it says that Sarah literally began to laugh to herself, like, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure she was like, sure, that's a familiar spirit. <laughs> As I'm not having a baby. But the truth is, there was a season, a waiting season for Abraham and Sarah between the promise and the provision. They waited 25 years to see the promise fulfilled and having a baby. So many of us maybe find ourselves in that waiting season or that silent season. We have this constant conflict of choosing to trust even in the midst of no longer hearing anything other than the initial promise. Something that I've learned in these seasons of waiting is recognizing that when you lean on the promises of God, they don't break when you lean on them. So he said it, and there may be this waiting period in between, and you had the faith to start, maybe even the faith to end, but you have the faith to endure in the middle. Abraham and Sarah trusted and believed that what God said would come to pass and everything God had promised was right on the other side of their waiting. Come on, say the waiting. In Genesis 6, God instructs Noah to build an ark. And we all love this story. Y'all, he had to wait 120 years. God said, I need you to build this boat because rain's coming. If you actually dive deep into this story and not just be like, Noah we'll built an ark and grabbed every animal. <laughs> and do the fell, watch Veggie Tales. No, 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 this is super complex. He said rain's coming, it's gonna fall from the sky. You know, they had never seen rain before. So he's building this massive ship, this massive boat on a promise from God and the people had never seen rain before. The earth was watered from the soil up and for 120 years he was mocked and made fun of Yet he continued to lean in and endure and embrace the waiting season. He held on to the initial word from the Lord. And I don't know who needs to hear this this morning, but I need you to start thinking about what the Father told you last. What did the Father tell you last? Go back and think about what he has empowered you with and what he encouraged you with and what he showed up and proved that he is fighting for you. What did he tell you last? Because Noah had to constantly go back to what God had told him last. And again, everything was on the other side of waiting. In Genesis 37, God gave Joseph a dream, but Joseph had to wait 13 years 
for the fulfillment of that God-given dream. In Exodus chapter two and chapter three, God called Moses to deliver the Israelites. Moses had to wait 40 years until it was time for God's people to be rescued. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, David was anointed. What an amazing moment. He had to wait over 10 years from the time he was anointed until he was crowned king. I need you to hear this. If God is making you wait, then you're in good company. Because I've discovered a lot of times in God's silence and in, God's, uh, in the waiting of direction, ultimately I've noticed God's hand of protection. So, so don't despise the waiting. Don't despise the moments that God seems quiet because in our, humanities, in, in, a human, in our humanity, a lot of times we rush it. And I'm telling you, if you rush it, you'll ruin it. That's why we say all the time, you need to pause, pray, and be patient. And trust God even when you can't hear him. If you're taking down notes, which we always encourage you to, we're talking about unshakable faith. Unshakable faith trusts him even when you can't track him. Pastor Jeremy says this all the time. I'm going to trust him even when I can't track him. Write that down. Unshakable faith will trust him even when you can't him because in every season, it's really hard sometimes to grasp those details, but I need you to know today that God is working it for your good. I remember so my, I started traveling and doing evangelism through worship. Uh, my wife and I got married in 2004. We celebrate 17 years next month, which is amazing. It's literally a miracle because in my family, if you make it a year, it's an absolute miracle. And in my family, when you're married, you have a couple girlfriends on the side. And uh, but not, I married a country girl, so she's like, mm -mm, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> I asked her one day, I said, what would happen if like, it didn't work out with us? Would you call me your ex? She said, I'd call you deceased. Okay. <laughs> Yo, I'm afraid. I mean, help me, help. <laughs> so <we're, laughs> That's terrible. I'm gonna skip that part for the next service. That's a nine o'clock special. So we travel, and God gave us some opportunity, and, and, uh, and this, this uh, booking request came in for me to preach at this amazing conference in Miami. I mean, thousands of people, and I told Jackie, I was like, hey, girl, we're going to Miami. <laughs> like, we're going to be hanging out on the beach. I'm going to put Panama Jack, all, like, lotion, like, all over my head, and, like, it's going to be incredible. And she's like, that's great. Hey, did you see the other one that came in from Memphis? I was like, nope. No offense to Memphis and Elvis's hometown, but I, we're going to Miami. And she said, I think you need to pray about it. I think you need to look at Memphis. I was like, so I looked at Memphis and it said, we may have 80 people here and we're trusting God for the finances to bring you in. I was like, we're going to Miami. <laughs> hey, Miami. Like I can't, Latino dance, yeah, but I'm, start, I'm figuring it out, I'm gonna do it. And, and she's like, babe, I think, you need to, I think you need to pray about it. Whenever she's like, you need to pray about it, I say, you need to pray about it. I'm gonna, I'll be in Miami while you're praying about it. And sure enough, we went to Memphis. And uh, it's a true story. L let me say this with boldness. Uh, uh, we're a church that truly believes and, and we are contending for signs, wonders, and miracles. Like we want to see lives restored and we want to see lives healed, but we want to see people come in with cancer and leave completely disease free. We want to see people come in and get completely and radically uh, healed and a manifestation of God's presence touch them. It doesn't have to be weird. Like when you walk in, an usher's not going to slap you in the mouth with anointing oil. Like it doesn't have to be strange. Where the presence of the Lord is and the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom and there's liberty, and there's breakthrough, and there's deliverance, and there's miracles, and there's signs and wonders. And I go to Memphis, and we're at this little church, and we're leading worship, and right before I had met this girl, this is a true story. I'm not stretching this at all. The church is called Warrior Church, and I'm at this church, and, but I've seen, I've seen miracles. It has literally built my expectation and my faith to believe God for more. It's created this unshakable faith to not be satisfied with the ordinary. And again, we don't have to have like, it doesn't have to get wild. Like, I'm not going to start floating on a cloud. You're like, what is happening? Is that special effects? <laughs> Met this, this mom and this, this, her daughter, and her daughter had cuts all over her arms. True story. Self-affliction. She'd been cutting, 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 cutting. And her mom said she had started on her legs where you couldn't see it, where her pants and her shorts would hide it. She was marked up. She said she's been through a lot. She had really, really, like, she, she had real eccentric makeup. And, and, and I said, uh, nice to meet you. And I said, why are you here? And she said, she made me come. And I said, I get it. She made me come. <laughs> We've all been in Miami. I could have prayed for you. 
I gotta pray for you on the beach. So long story short, we're leading worship and we're flowing and I'm about to minister and I felt the Lord, again, I'm not hyper-spiritualizing this. I felt the Lord say, I'm doing a miracle internally and it's gonna reflect in the external and everyone in the room will know that my hand has moved. I felt it. It wasn't this audible voice, but I felt it. I could literally just, I could feel the presence of God. If you've ever felt that nudge or that internal, uh, and we're gonna talk more about the Holy Spirit this, this month, but, but I felt it. I felt his presence. And so I said it in the mic and I wasn't afraid to say it. It was a little vague, but man, what I didn't know was heaven touched earth in that moment. Afterwards, the mom came up weeping, the little girl, 17 years old, weeping all her makeup off, like weeped all of her makeup off. And, and she's, her mom's asking me, can you explain this? Y'all, as God is my witness, standing here in my Kohan wingtip shoes, uh, uh, her mom pulled up her sleeves and every line that we had seen before the service was gone. I, 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 it was gone. It was like an overseas Smith Wigglesworth sort of, it, it, it was so amazing. I said, whoa, and like everybody around me was like, what? And we began to talk. Every cut, literally her skin looked new. And the girl said, I don't know what happened. I just felt, I felt peace for the first time. And there was one cut left right here where her arm folds. And I said, what's this one? And she started to cry again. And she said, it's the first time I cut myself. My dad went out to get ice at my 12th birthday and never came back. And the only way I could ease my pain was by cutting, and then it became a problem. But she said, I felt free tonight, and I felt peace tonight, and I got my miracle tonight. You, you know she's serving in that amazing church as a youth leader today, completely healed, has the before and the after pictures. Don't tell me God's not doing miracles still. But Jackie and I were led to go even when we couldn't track what God was asking us to do, because a lot of times he'll give you direction without the details, but thank God we went to Memphis to get in the way of that girl's storm. What has God been asking you to do? What has God been asking you to step out in? What has God been trying to unlock in you, but maybe timidity or not knowing all the details you've held back? Unshakable faith says, I'll trust you even when I can't track you. I talked to a guy this week who was struggling with church hurt and struggling with trying to connect to the local church and connect to the heart of God again. And he said, man, I just, I'm struggling because I don't have all the details. I don't know all this. I don't know all that. I said, man, I'm literally preaching about that this week. Let me help you. And I gave him three verses. I said, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you guys too. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one says this, for everything there is a season and a time, every matter under heaven. Psalms 27, 14 says, wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 said, And let us not grow weary in well doing, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. I said, Man, let me pray for you because you, you seem upset because maybe things that you hoped for didn't line up with your expectations. Maybe the timing of God didn't line up with your expectations. And he said, Bro, that's exactly where I'm at. And I said, Let me pray for you. I invited him. He couldn't come this Sunday, but he's coming next Sunday. Let's go. So again, if God is quiet, if God almost seems silent, can you get through that season? Can you have unshakable faith in the middle of a season where he seems silent? Write this down if you're taking down notes. Unshakable faith grows in the middle of the waiting and quiet season. Unshakable faith grows in the middle of the waiting and quiet season. And if you'll lean in, I'm telling you, it will unlock unshakable faith in your life for the future. Look at the person next to you and say, unshakable faith. Come on. Another thought, because a lot of times when we pray, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, it says, this is the confidence we have. I love that, because there's a, there's a different level, a different posture when you know who you are and who you are, that you can approach him with confidence. This is the confidence that we have when approaching God, that anything we ask according to his will, he hears us. But what if his will is Yes? What if it's not yet? What if it's no? And that's hard. That's tough. Because a lot of times we have to, we have to check ourselves and make sure that our prayer life isn't full of selfish ambition. Like, God, I just pray that you would demote Sheila. I need her office as a corner office. I need the raise and the Maserati. So, Lord, just let everything fall apart for Sheila. 
is the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. That's probably not the will of God to pray that prayer. God, I pray that you constipate my spouse until they listen. Like, people pray these prayers. It's crazy stuff. So another loaded question. Can you still posture yourself and position yourself and seek the face of God in the middle of a not yet season? Or in the middle of a not right now season, which is the same, or a no, because I know what's best for you, I'm God season? Can you position yourself and recognize that when you approach his presence, even if it's not now, even if it's a no or even it's a yes. Listen, God has been so good to us and he's been better than good to us. So I've just, I've just decided because of a heart of gratitude that God, I'll worship you even in a no season. I'll worship you even in a not yet season. I'll worship you if everything is being answered like that season because I trust you. I trust you because if the only thing you ever did for me was hang on the cross, it would have been enough, but you came to give me life more abundantly truth is, you've done so much more than I could have ever hoped or imagined. Maverick City Music just released a song that says, it's breathe, and it says, it's a miracle that I can even breathe. Yes. Y'all realize you woke up again today and you're breathing, which is proof that God's not done with you yet? Y'all realize you've survived 100% of your worst days? God still has a plan. He still has a purpose. If you're taking down notes, my last point is unshakable faith chooses praise and worship in every situation. We can ride the emotional roller coaster of what we think is faith. But maybe it's a real kind of a shaky, fleeting idea of what faith is, but God is wanting to equip us with so much more. He wants to equip us with unshakable faith. Can you stand your feet? I'm gonna rapid fire three characteristics of unshakable faith. You don't have to take down notes on this one, but I want you to position yourself in a posture to receive. We're gonna end out today worshiping, and we're gonna end out today remembering all that he's done. We're gonna end out today with our hands lifted and our voices lifted saying, God, I'll worship you and I'll trust you when I can't track you. I'll worship you and I'll choose to trust you in the middle of every scenario, even if you seem quiet, even if I'm stuck, what feels like stuck in this waiting place. I'm choosing to trust you because you've been better than good to me. Three characteristics of unshakable faith. Number one, Unshakable faith equips us with boldness. There's a different level of boldness. The Bible says in Proverbs 28, 1, that the righteous are as bold as a lion. When you're afraid, it will cause you to run and hide, but unshakable faith in God gives you the boldness to face any situation. Unshakable faith equips you with perseverance. Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold on to the confession of our hope and our faith without wavering, since he who promised is faithful. The walk of faith is a walk of perseverance. When the answer does not come and we want to give up, unshakable faith says, do not quit. All throughout my wife's, uh, in my journey, we had some health challenges and some storms and situations. And if you've been around, you know the story that we're talking about cancer and, and multiple tumors. And it felt quiet. It felt heavy. It felt overwhelming. But every time fear tried to come in, we recognized that fear tolerated as faith contaminated. And we recognize that if we will not get weary and we will press into the promise of God, fear says retreat. Faith says run in. Trusting and knowing that God's already opening doors, fighting her battle. And whether we get rescued on the outside of the fire or on the inside of the fire, we know that the fourth man is with us. There's perseverance in unshakable faith. And last but not least, unshakable faith equips us with stability. The Bible says in Psalms 40, verse 31, he lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire, and he set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. So today, God, our unshakable faith is where your super meets with our natural, and the supernatural is released. Will you lift your hands towards heaven? Holy Spirit, I pray right now, God, that there is a stirring, an awakening, of unshakable faith at Hope City Church. God, that we would begin to believe for more. When we see someone in a wheelchair, we'll believe that that wheelchair will end up at the altar and they'll walk out of the room. God, we're trusting that cancer bows, that diabetes bows, that congestive heart failure bows, that marriages are healed and restored, that addictions break off, that generational struggles 
break off. And God, I pray today that we would recognize that even in the waiting and the quiet season, we trust you. We will be content in every circumstance. We will be intentional to worship you, be intentional to praise you, be intentional to seek your face and your word and invest in our prayer and our relationship with you. But God will also be intentional about simply remembering all that you've done. I'm telling you right now, can you position yourself right now in a posture of remembering? I'm telling you, there is a shift happening in families right now. There is miracles breaking out in someone's life right now just by simply going back and saying, devil, James 4, 7 says, I have the authority to resist you. And if I have the authority to resist you, you have to flee. Look at all that God has brought me up out of. He rescued me here. He pulled me up out of a low place here. When the doctor said it was something else, it wasn't what it looked like. God showed up and healed me there. Because he's our gyro. And he's more than enough. Myra, Jeremiah, can we sing that? Let's sing it together. Jaira, you are enough. Jaira, you are enough. I love this part right here. I will be. So I will be content. Every circumstance. Every circumstance. Jaira, City watching online, watching the archive. God, I pray that unshakable faith would be unlocked even in the middle of the waiting or quiet season. Unshakable faith will be unlocked, God, even in the middle of a season where we can't track the details of what you're doing. And unshakable faith would be unlocked as we choose to worship and praise you in every situation. We will be content every circumstance we know that you're working it out for our good. Put your hands down just for a moment. If you're here today and you said, Daniel, the truth is I need unshakable faith, but I don't know Jesus. And the foundation of unshakable faith completely and totally depends upon the rock that you build it upon, which is Jesus. The answer always begins with and always ends with Jesus. Whether you're in the room or you're watching online, or you're at one of our other locations, you say, I don't know him as my savior, but today 
I want to, here at Hope City, we don't pray prayers for symbolic reasons. We believe what Romans chapter 10, verse nine and 10 says to be true, that when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, watch this, it says you will be saved. Slate wiped clean, the messiest past erased. Thumbprint of God himself touches your life like he did my dad. Grateful for a God-fearing woman like my mama watching right now online. We prayed and waited and trusted in the quiet season, believing that her husband David would know Jesus. And because the prayers of a righteous woman <laughs> availeth and the righteous man availeth much, she said, I continue to stay steadfast in my faith, trusting that God would show up and do what he promised. And you know, I'm in full-time ministry. My brother, my sister, and my dad serves God now over 40 years because Jesus showed up and fought for our family. So maybe you don't know him as your savior. Maybe you're here, maybe you're listening and you don't, you used to, but you fell away. You got caught up in the prodigal life and you say, Daniel, today's my day that I wanna surrender and rededicate today. God, I pray today that there would be a realignment, a reconnection, a renewal that happens in families and hearts and husbands and wives and single folks. God touches and meet us where we're at. Every eye closed. We're gonna ask in just a moment. I'm gonna count to three. We will not embarrass you. It's God's job to change you, but it's our job to walk with you so that you can be discipled. One, I wanna give my life to Jesus. Two, today's my day. I wanna rededicate. I want unshakable faith built on the rock. Three, if that's you, lift up your hand. I wanna give my life to Jesus. Hands popping up everywhere. One, two, three, four, five. I see you. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Come on, somebody. 13 in the back. I see you. All the way back here. I see you, my friend. Amazing. Hands are going up on all of our other locations. Will you pray this prayer with us today along with our Hope City worship team? We're going to pray and watch supernaturally. There's a shift that's about to happen in your life, but I want everybody to pray this prayer, including online. Say this, Jesus, it's me. I've been living for me and it's just not working. From this moment on, I choose to live for you. I lay every sin, every mistake, my entire past, I lay it at your feet and I ask for forgiveness. From this moment on, I'm gonna live for you, for you're my Father, you're my Savior, and you're my Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, can you give God a shout of praise?